The election is top of mind for traders ahead of the polls closing tonight for the New Hampshire primary. Now, this comes as State Street's chief investment officer tells the market watch that the firm is warning investors not to bet all of their money on President Trump getting reelected. Joining us now, we have Keith Fitzgerald, chief investment strategist at Money Map Press. And Keith, when we dig into what State Street was saying just in terms of whether or not the market is counting too much on a President Trump being reelected, what do you think? Well, I got to tell you, I have a slightly different view here. I think the markets are actually preparing for exactly the reverse, the possibility of a Trump loss. The law of unintended consequences rung strong and hard in the financial markets, and I think traders are simply trying to get ahead of that. Well, Keith, when it comes, though, to the 2020 election, lots of talk out there about how investors should play this, where there is opportunity, whether or not we are going to see increased volatility. Do you think that's likely? Oh, absolutely. I think we're going to see increased volatility, and if not necessarily just because of the election, because of the coronavirus, because of trade, because of all sorts of things that are in the headlines now. But, you know, again, your job as an investor, any investor, is to capture profits no matter what's happening in the marketplace. So if this market wants to run higher, then you know what? It's like being at the rodeo. You go for that eight-second buzzer and you stay on the horse or the bull. In the meantime, again, quality companies, quality profits, clear path to profits, protectable margins, all the fundamentals are strong, and that's a good case for being in to win. Keith, you mentioned one of the uncertainties out there, the coronavirus. Where it stands right now, we have the markets not too far from all-time highs. NASDAQ hitting a record high. When you take a look at that, do you think the markets are underestimating maybe the potential fallout from the coronavirus? Well, my own personal view is they're underestimating it, not just by a little bit, but by a lot. I think they have terribly misunderstood the nature of this virus. I think it's mutating rapidly. I don't believe we're getting anything close to the, to the true story out of China. And that concerns me from an investing standpoint. What do you think the potential impact could be not only on the U.S. markets, but also just in terms of the U.S. economy? Well, I tell you what, the initial term, if, if I'm right, and again, I, you know, in this business, normally you want to be right, but I would love to be wrong on this, frankly. Um, if there is an impact, I think it's going to be a short-term economic hit, but the silver lining is much of the manufacturing is going to come home. Companies are going to redo their supply chains. They're going to figure out how to be less dependent on China going forward. So I think if you get through that initial drop, that gut-wrenching drop that's probably going to happen, we might emerge a lot stronger for the experience out of this. Keith, do you think it could have any impact on the U.S.-China trade really? just in terms of the latest round of negotiations. We have that phase one trade deal, but lots of talk about whether or not we'll see something out of, a, I guess if you want to call it a phase two deal. Oh, sure. You know, there's, a, there's a, a provision in there, as I understand it. I'm hearing back channel sort of discussion out of China that many experts want China to invoke a sort of a disaster or a catastrophe clause that would give it extraordinary relief against the coronavirus and the potential impact of that. So, you know, I expect somebody to play that card within the next few weeks or months. But, you know, again, from an economic standpoint, it's a good deal. It's a strong deal. It's a deal that needs to be in place. They're going to go to phase two. Keith, one of the big stories that we're watching today, we had Fed Chair Jerome Powell. Uh, he was on Capitol Hill answering a wide-ranging uh, number of questions. But one thing I just want to ask you, just in terms of when we take a look at the Fed's current monetary policy, how high do you think the bar is at this point in order for the Fed to cut rates or ease policy in any sort of fashion? Boy, I tell you what, I'm not smart enough to figure that one out, but the pressure has got to be extreme because in the face of what potentially could be a crisis based on the coronavirus, you know, he's going to want room to lower rates. On the other hand, we've got a strong economy, so he's got to be feeling the pressure to cool, you know, to, to increase rates and, and cool things down. I think Powell threaded the needle quite nicely, though, when he said, we're just going to have to wait and see. We're going to look at this, take a very solid approach. I like what he had to say today. All right, Keith Fitzgerald, thanks so much for stopping by. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.